Good morning. Today we're doing a triple shot. I'm gonna be making three videos all at the same time. So, the first video is the hardest closer of 2019. The other video is Chickens and Demons, the full show. Well, part of it at least, because the hardest closer is part of that show. So technically I'm working on that one too. And the video you just clicked on, how to write drumline music. By the way, you should totally check out those other two videos. I'll link them in the description. Okay, so this is Cubase 5. I use this program to write the music for Chickens and Demons. Well, most of it at least. Some of it is recorded live. All the virtual drumline stuff and tracks are all done with this program as well. Some of it's done in Reason too. I mentioned that in the video about how to transcribe a song from scratch. So check that one out too. I'll leave that one in the description as well. So this is the full show so far. We got like 400 and 50 bars, 449 right there, a little bit more. Um, so let me show you how Cubase works real quick. So we got over here our instruments, snare, tenor, bass, blah, 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 all this stuff. Then we got our sound effects. And then the live recordings are right here. This one is the cymbal feature, which I just put that video out yesterday. <laughs> Yep, that's all good, but what we're focusing on is the end of this, which I started writing. This is kind of like the little teaser I like to do at the end of my feature videos, which will show the beginning of the next feature video. So here is what I wrote so far. Pretty cool stuff, I know. So. Uh, snare part looks like this. Pretty much impossible to sight read this, so I'll <laughs> explain it real quick. This is virtual drumline um, with grid notation. So there's only a few notes you gotta worry about. This F sharp right here, that's the left hand. G sharp is the right hand. G natural is a shot. And then up here we got ping and there's some other stuff. Uh, that's pretty much all we gotta worry about right now. And I like to use Cubase when writing for virtual drumline because of this feature right here, the velocities. You can set the velocity between zero and 127, and that's pretty much your dynamic, how loud it can get. In Finale, you only have like piano, pianissimo, well, like whatever dynamics they give you, but in this, you have 127 of them. So you can really get exactly how loud you want it. And also, I like this because uh, grace note playback in Finale is horrible. I can never, f I've been using Finale since I was like 13 and I cannot figure out how to get the grace note to sound good. I've gone through all of the playback settings and it always like sounds either super wide or too tight or it changes the rhythm. It's really annoying and stupid. I'm sure all you Finale users know what I'm talking about. In Cubase, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do, zoom in here, here's a grace note. Right there, that's a grace note to this main note, and right now I have it set one sixty-fourth note away from it. And that sounds pretty good. Let's check it out. You can't really hear it, but trust me, it sounds great. It's the exact type of flam I want, so we use Cubase to write that because I want it to sound perfect for you guys in the video. And the way this is written, um, let me turn on the quantize. So these are the note values. Right now we're in whole notes. You can see each bar broken up. Then we go to half notes. Got B1, 3, so on and so forth. We'll go with eighth notes. I like to look at that. So first thing we have is four eighth notes. So we're going to go over to finale here. Zoom in. I like to use Finale to write my music, only because that's the program that I know how to use. I know MuseScore is free, Finale actually costs some money, unless you know how to use the Pirate Bay. So whatever software you're using, it's the same exact process I go through, I j I'm just gonna do it in this because I know how to. So right now I'm not using Virtual Drumline in Finale because it's very difficult to do without a MIDI keyboard and I'm not in my room, I'm at the Marine Barracks Washington, so I don't feel like bringing that big keyboard all around with me, so we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way. And plus, I don't need this to sound good. This do, this is just for visual reference to put in the video. So, it just needs to look good. I don't care about how it sounds. It's gonna sound stupid. Yep, those stock finale sounds. But this is gonna take a while. Right now, I'm just gonna transcribe everything I wrote. 
Here we go. You guys want to see something I hate about Finale? It's stupid with the tuplet tool. So, let's delete. Hold on. I want to delete that. Okay, we're good. Now, I want to copy and paste this triplet with the flams on it to beat three. So, logic says, highlight it. Drag it to beat three. Ah! What is that? All right, yeah, go ahead. Sight read that. See, see who can figure that one out. Okay, so that's the snare part that we have written out so far. We got, looks like, 15 measures written. So, the, uh, the tenor part is kinda this copy and pasted, but with arounds. And I'll probably change that as we go, but let's get the tenor part written. So here it is on Cubase. Uh, same thing, I do this because of the velocities, and it's really easy to get exactly how I want it to sound. Where are the notes at? There, all right, that was too high up. Okay, so this is in virtual drum line. We got uh, the high Spock, right hand, left hand. Or wait, right hand, left hand, low Spock, and just same thing, just keep going down. And then you got the shots are down here somewhere. There's all kinds of strange sounds. On finale you copied and pasted all the rest of these bars perfectly fine why not the last one right, so before it should be this let's make it that oh good now it's that yeah that's exactly what I wanted right. Take that part. oh all right screw it We're deleting all of this and rewriting it again wasting my time wasting everybody's time All right, there we go. There's the tenor part. I didn't write any of the crossovers yet, because I'm probably going to change most of this as we drum through it. But let's do the bass drum part. Uh, the bass drum part is kind of complements the what the snare and tenors are doing, but it's written differently because there's like six tuplet runs when there's triplet roll. So got to write that one all over. Here's the bass part in Q bass. Huh? So this cool. it looks like a bunch of waves in the ocean. This is actually, there's six bass drums in Virtual Drumline. I use the bottom five because I like how the bottom bass drum sounds. It's down here. So I just leave out the very high one. So we got the bottom, five, four, three, two, one. And then there's the super high pitch. Then there's unison down here. Rim clicks and notes. All right, so there it is. The first 15 bars all transcribed from Cubase. There's no symbol part for this because those guys just had a one minute, 30 second feature. All right, they need a, a little bit of a break. But before we move on to writing more stuff, I'm gonna check all of this to see if it's good by playing it on actual drums. And I highly recommend that when you're writing, you have drums or at least pads that you're playing this stuff on. So a tenor pad, and I mean, you can play the snare part on a tenor pad too. So get a tenor pad, obviously. And you can play the bass parts on your tenor pad. And I think that's very important because there's been a lot of times where I've written stuff without playing it. And then I go to play it and I think of ways that it could have been a little bit better or felt better. So definitely play the stuff as you're writing it because it's gonna be better so with that said i wrote all this stuff without playing it so now i gotta go back and make sure it feels good okay so first i'm gonna put in my hearing protection because i don't want to go deaf in five years so that's good and i got my metronome which we are going to connect to the bluetooth speakers right now Should work. there it is this is at 192, so I'm going to have the click going while I'm doing this to make sure that I'm in time and that this is all possible at this tempo.
Okay, so here's the final product of these 15 bars. I changed a whole lot. Pretty much all of the tenor rounds are now different and cooler and harder. And I had to water down some of the snare stuff because it was impossible. Well, I couldn't play it, so that means nobody can play it. So like I said, make sure you play this stuff when you write it, especially if you're giving it out to somebody else, so that they aren't confused and screaming at you for writing something impossible or lame. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and write some more. So what I have here in Audacity is B Mike's Demons in My Head, which is the song that we are writing to. And I already arranged some of this, I gotta finish it up, but we're gonna stay pretty much true to the track. So what I'm gonna do is just listen to a small chunk of it and then try to think of ideas and then hack through stuff. And yeah, let's, let's try it. So, so far, the symbol feature goes through this, and then what we are starting at in measure four starts right here. All right, cool. Good. I like what I had. I just sung it, and I mean, that's what was playing when I wrote it in Cubase already, so I kind of knew what it was going to sound like. Anyways, we're starting. Uh, let's see. We finished measure 15. Not that far. It's the last four bars of this phrase. So let's put a little double bar line right in there to make sure we know where we are. So I'll usually start writing on snare and then write the quad part to complement the snare and then write the bass drum part to complement the both of them. Uh, sometimes I don't do that. It depends how inspired I am. Right now, I am mildly inspired. We're just gonna kind of wing it and figure it out. So let's get our click going. We're at 192. 192 is a little faster than what the actual song is. But that's okay. It's an arrangement. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect and it has to be cool. Okay, so here's what I came up with. Release, and then a little triplet rule kind of decrescendo action, followed by singles decrescendo action. Double stop, left hand triplets with a stick flip inward toss in the right hand. Fivelet tap accent, five stroke rolls. Triplet roll, and then, oh yeah, we're gonna decrescendo this last bar. Let me write that in. There we go, all the way to pianissimo. And then this part's gonna be a bass drum feature right here. Yeah, so that's what I thought of. I'm thinking maybe some of these five-lit accents, I'll have like the tenors play the accents when the snares are playing the taps and have the tenors play taps when the snares are playing accents. Maybe that'll sound cool. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna hack through the tenor part, see what I come up with. So here we go. Let's get the met on, the snare sticks down. Okay, so here's what I got for the tenor part. Starting out in unison with the snares. Uh, just, you know, it's pretty fast, so we're not gonna go crazy with the arounds. We just got this high spot, then that rolls on drum two. Singles are on drum one, crossed over on the same drum. Not because I have to, but because I can. 
Then we're going to do kind of a little split part here between the stairs and tenors. Uh, three over two, switching back and forth. So, jet, jig, da, jet, jig, da. And then the fivelet, I, I did what I thought I wanted to do. I had the accents uh, switching between snares and tenors. I actually put shots in the tenors to make it nice and tasty. And I also took the diddles out of the snare part. Not because I can't play them, but I just think it'll be a little bit cleaner and more pleasant to the ear if there weren't diddles in that specific part, because we want to hear the accents. So took the diddles out of that, and then unison on the decrescendo, uh, low Spock on the roll, and then high Spock fade out into the buzz. Okay, so now we're gonna write the bass part. Uh, just gonna, I'm probably gonna f drop it out, uh, maybe in the second or second to last or the last bar. I'm not sure because there's bass feature coming up, and we want it to kind of come out of nowhere, not not ramp up into it. So let's see what we got for bass drums here. Okay, bass part is written. So first I gotta walk up the drums. Or actually, let me yeah, let me make that fours, not twos. I don't know why I did that. Okay, now the bass drum part's written. So gotta walk up the drums with the roll, and then we got a little squig action. I'm probably gonna do that hand to hand, like a one and a da, and then bass two is. Uh, and normally for bass drum splits, I'm not gonna write the sticking in cause well, I'm the one playing it and I'll just know what I wanna do. But also even if I was writing for somebody else, uh, usually when you have stuff like this, the bass drummer should know like, okay, I got four notes, I'll start with the right hand. And also there's some micro phasing that I put in the snare and tenor part. Uh, they got these little uh, tenuto accents. Sometimes I'll put that in the bass drum part, sometimes I won't. Like for this part, I don't think it's completely necessary because this snare roll on the upbeat, Naturally, I want to do a little bit of tenuto on the beginning of that, but for the bass drum part, I'm not going to want to play accent like tenuto accents on the bass four and then not on three. That won't sound good or even. So sometimes it's okay to not have the same phrasing in the bass line as you do in the snare or tenor line. You'll be all right. It'll be fine. All right, then the next bar, I have the bass drum playing the same rhythms that the snare and tenor split are going to do, which is one, da 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 Right, rim click on the right hand, drum on the left hand, should sound pretty cool. And then five is just gonna walk up the drums. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. And then nothing for the next part because we wanna give a little anticipation for the feature coming up. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna play them for you. I'm not gonna play the bass drum part because I don't feel like doing all that. Uh, you'll see it in the final product in the actual video. Link is in the description. Here's the snare part. And the tenor part. Okay, so now the last thing I'm gonna do for this phrase, I'm gonna go back into the song here, and we're gonna listen to B mic, and I'm just gonna read through the music that I wrote and make sure that it's what I want. So sometimes I might write and get excited and write something that doesn't fit the music at all. So we wanna make sure this all fits with what's happening. Let's check it out, I'll drum talk through it. Yeah! Alright, I think that's really tasty. If you're just beginning, like, writing music, you'll probably need to listen to it a few times. I've done this a lot, so I kind of get a grasp on how it's going to sound just by, like, reading through it once while listening, so... I'm experienced. If you're inexperienced, don't be afraid to get more extra reps on it and really focus on what you're doing. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna do bass drums. I really like writing for bass drums, especially when I'm all five bass drums. And I think I'm just gonna let the music stop there and have like a little squeaky, squeaky, splitty, 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 yo, go, 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 something like that. I don't know yet. Okay, so since the last bass drum thing was this, uh, this going up to the top, we're gonna start at the bottom. Bass, uh, bass five note. Let me let me actually listen to this one more time. See how it starts. Okay, you can pretty much write whatever I want. There's not that much rhythmic complexity going on in the song, so let's let's keep the metronome on. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's really loud. All right. Wrote some stuff, uh, let's see if we can see it. 
All right, this is the bass drum feature. A lot of stuff in there. Actually, hold on. Select all utility stem direction up because Finale always puts the stem direction facing down, but that looks weird, so we're going up. Decrescendo this, and then recrescendo this. And okay, we're all at forte, nice and beefy. Cool, all right, this is what I got. And I think I'm ready now, so let's play the recording. I actually added a little fade out and cut something out here, so it'll sound kind of what it's going to sound like when I arrange this for realsies. So here we go. Yo! Go, 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 go! Yeah! That's gonna be crazy and hot! Alright, cool. That's where I'm gonna stop for today. We've been at it for almost three hours straight. Hopefully that's some good information for you. I don't want to, like, burn myself out here because we got a lot of stuff to write still. So we'll, we'll come back tomorrow to hopefully finish it off and maybe get this thing recorded. <laughs> And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, EMC Productions, and click that Liberty Bell so you get notified when I post new videos, and consider buying a custom t-shirt, such as this one. I'll leave that link in the description too. And, have a good morning. <laughs>